Pastor Steve is going to come and, and we're going to take communion. And um, those of you that are home, if, if you have your grape juice ready and your cracker bread ready, we'd like to invite you to share in communion with us. Amen. We're going to have communion. Uh, I hold that as a very holy thing. I just want to stress that if you have need of healing tonight, that uh, that we don't need a prayer line tonight. That that I believe there's healing in communion. Amen. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. There's healing. Amen. And uh, I'd like to ask my son to come and. Uh, We're going to pass out the elements, and I want you to join right in with us. And uh, I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians uh, 11, and I'll start in verse 23 here in just a moment, as soon as we get these passed out. But uh, once again, if you have any need, I want you to see yourself already on the other side, victorious. Uh, I want you to see yourself already healed. I want you to see yourself already stress-free and debt-free and all those things. Amen. That's how I want you to see yourself. Amen? I want you to see yourself through the eyes of faith. You know, God gives us the faith to get saved. Well, he can give us the faith to, to believe to receive. Amen? Amen? That's the kind of God I serve. Uh let me pray before we have communion. Father, I just come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this precious time that we have to, to share in the Lord's Supper, God. Father, I thank you that if we have need of healing in our bodies, that you bring it tonight. I pray, Lord, that if we have any need, financial need, whatever kind of need that we have tonight, Lord, as we take communion, that by faith we believe we receive, Lord. Father, we just give you thanks. And we do this in remembrance of you, and we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Ah. Uh, so let's take the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's take the cup. Once again, I want you to see yourself already on the other side. I want you to see yourself victorious. I want you to see yourself not in lack or want or anything like that, but I want you to see yourself prosperous and above all, see yourself healed. Amen. Uh, I'm going to be teaching tonight from the book of First Peter. Uh, chapter 1 verses 1 through 12 that's 1st Peter chapter 1 verses 1 through 12 and if I was going to entitle this message tonight I would have to call it be secure through suffering be secure through suffering uh, how many knows God doesn't want us to suffer well, he doesn't want us to suffer. But how many knows that in this life we'll have tribulation? Amen? I mean, it's not pleasant to have tribulation. It's not pleasant to be suffering in any way, shape, or form. Amen? But there's a way out through the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Last week I preached on how Jesus bore our suffering and our sorrows and our pains and our agonies and all those things. Well, this week I'm going to be preaching on... Be secure through suffering. Uh, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and read uh, 1 Peter 1, 1 through 12, and then we'll, 
we'll get into this. Uh, well, first of all, let me just give an introduction. As Peter is writing to people who were hurting and suffering. People who were being ridiculed and persecuted because they lived for Jesus Christ. Anybody here been persecuted or ridiculed because you live for Jesus Christ? Throughout the Roman Empire, believers had been attacked and were being savagely persecuted. So much that they had uh, been forced to flee for their lives. <laughs> we were studying from the book of Acts not long ago how the church suffered heavy persecution but even through that it still turned around for good you know why because the gospel was just being preached in and around Jerusalem but when the church started getting persecuted it caused the, the body of Christ to flee throughout the uh, entire region and <clears throat> but what they took with them was the gospel of Jesus Christ they began to preach and teach wherever they went so Jesus was being spread throughout, amen? amen? So just remember, I don't know what you're going through tonight, but everything, all things are working together for your good, amen? amen? If you can remember that and remember God, you can remember that there's going to be a better tomorrow, amen? amen. You know, they've been forced to leave everything behind, homes, property, estates, businesses, jobs, money, church, friends, and fellow believers. I mean, these, these people had to leave it all. Uh, you know, they took what they could and they, they fled. And Peter is writing to five Roman provinces where most of the believers had apparently tried to hide and find safety. Uh, but the church was continuing on as an underground church, amen? The church of Jesus Christ is going to continue on, even if we have to do it on the run, amen? <clears throat> Aren't you thankful that you live in the United States of America where you can worship God in your own living room or in your own church or wherever you want to? I'm thankful. You know, I, I've heard people say so many times, well, there's a church on every corner. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm thankful that there's a church on every corner. Amen. You know, for years, uh, America has sent out missionaries to foreign countries to, to evangelize the world. Well, I'll I tell you what, America's in such a state that we need missionaries to come here and evangelize us. Amen? Amen. Uh, America's in such a, a state of turmoil. It's in such a state of sin. Sin like you've never known before. Uh, but the believers desperately needed strong encouragement. But how? How do you strengthen a person who is suffering and hurting so much? Have you ever tried to console someone who's hurting and suffering? That's not an easy thing to do, amen? It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, how can a person be secure, secure through suffering and persecution? There's only one way. There's only one way. He must know that he is saved and be absolutely sure that he is under the care and love of God. Uh, you know, First Peter it just tells us how to be secure through suffering. Our security is this, knowing that we are saved, that we belong to God and are looked after by God. Uh, the first thing to know about our salvation is this, know that you are the chosen of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me start, let me read 1 Peter 1, 1 through 12, and then we'll get into the Word. I'm not going to keep you very long tonight. We're just going to share God's Word. It says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Here Peter's saying grace and peace be yours in abundance. Here they're, they're suffering and being persecuted but he's still speaking faith to them. Amen. Amen. In verse 3 it says praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded, everybody say shielded, shielded, shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. 
These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even through refine, even though refined by fire, <clears throat> may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That's the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. How do you, how do you reach the salvation of your soul? Well, you, you conquer all these things that come before you, amen? And you read the Word of God and you pray in the Spirit, amen? That's how you, you bring the salvation of your soul. Well, that's the goal of your faith. So many people today think the goal, your goal is to reach financial security. To listen to all these how-to tapes, you know, how to become a millionaire overnight and how to do this and how to do that. Well, this is the goal of our faith, the salvation of our souls, amen? You know, if, if we uh, follow after God, all these things are going to be added anyway, amen? In verse 10 it says, Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things uh, that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Uh, you know, in verses 1 and 2, the chosen are believers. We're the chosen of God, amen? Uh, and believers are only strangers scattered over the earth. Uh, our citizenship is not of this earth. Our citizenship is in heaven. Uh, you've heard of being ambassadors for Christ? Well, United States ambassador, even though he might be in a foreign country, he doesn't get his support from that foreign country. He gets his support from the United States. Well, let me tell you, even though we live in this world, we don't get our support from this world. We get our support from the kingdom of God. Amen? That's our home. We're just passing through. Uh, believers are only strangers on earth. The word means pilgrim or sojourner, visitor or exile. The idea is that of a person visiting a place for a while. That's what the Greek word is implying. Uh, he's not a permanent resident. Believers are citizens of heaven. Their home is in heaven with God. Uh, not on earth with the rulers of this world. So, you know, keep the faith. Just remember, we're just passing through here. We're just here temporarily. Amen? Uh, the things that we see are temporary, but the things unseen are eternal. Amen. Uh, the rulers and people of this earth may persecute believers, but we're only here temporarily. Uh, it means that we live on this earth. Uh, it, it means that where we live on this earth does not matter all at, mu uh, at much at all. No matter where we live, it is not our permanent home. Our home is in heaven. You know, we may even be forced to leave our homes and countries because of troubles and persecutions. Maybe not in America, but I know they do in the foreign worlds, amen. People are being killed because of their faith in, in foreign worlds. Uh, in, you know, in some of these uh, countries where Christianity is not very highly appreciated. Uh, we may be poor and suffer great hardship in this life, but it is only for a brief time. We are only strangers and pilgrims in this earth. We're only strangers. We're, we're just passing through the suffering and, and all those things that you're going through right now. That is going to pass. Amen? Amen. That is going to pass. We shall soon be called to go home, but I believe the suffering and all those things are going to pass before we're called to go home, before the rapture of the church. And we're going to go to our permanent home in heaven and be there forever, and there should be no hunger, or poverty, or suffering, or hardship in heaven. You know, uh, we need to keep our mind and eyes focused upon heaven as a permanent home, focused upon how short life is, 
You might live to be a hundred years old, but that's going to seem short when the time comes. Amen? Compared to eternity. Amen. And we need to stay focused upon how uncertain, insecure, and short-term all things upon earth really are. You know, there's businesses. I, I've been watching the news, and, and there's businesses that are closing here and there. And, and some people thought, well, we just thought this business would be the place to retire from now on. Well, you're finding that in this world, even giant businesses aren't even secure. Amen? You know, you think, well, they're going to go on forever. Well, that's not true. Just remember, things here on this earth are temporary. But things in heaven are eternal. They're for eternity. Uh, you know, in verses 3 through 4, let me read that again. 1 Peter 1, 3 through, through I'm sorry, 3 through 5. It says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us uh, new birth into a, a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded. Listen to that. Who through faith are shielded. We're shielded. We're shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. When the enemy comes to you or when problems come to you, you just speak to those problems. It says in the Bible, what shall we then say to these things? Well, is suffering a thing? Suffering's a thing. Is persecution a thing? What shall we then say to these things? It says, if God be for us, then who can be against us? When those problems arise and come your way, you speak to that situation and say, if God be for me, who can be against me? All things are working together for my good. Amen? So you speak to those things. How was the earth created? There wasn't a construction crew that came down, to, down here to, to build this earth. God spoke it into existence. And by the spoken word, we can speak to our problems. Amen. Amen. By the word of God, we can speak to our problems. What is the great hope of the believer? It is eternal life. One day we're going to be walking the streets of gold and you're going to look back on all your sufferings and trials and persecutions and think it as nothing. Amen. Amen. The glorious privilege of living forever with God. Just imagine living face to face with God forever. I can't even imagine that. Amen. The one who created me, the one who, who gave his life for me, no greater privilege could ever be given to a man. Amen. Uh, note that our hope is said to be a living hope. A living hope means that it is not de a dead, lifeless hope. There is the source of the hope. The source is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, note who our Lord Jesus Christ is. First of all, he is our Lord. One to whom we have surrendered and subjected our lives. And he is Jesus, the carpenter from Nazareth, the man who claimed to be the Son of God and also sent to be the Savior of men. He is Christ, the Messiah, who is promised by God to save men. Hallelujah. Man, I tell you what. I get excited... Uh, you know, you see the turmoil in the world today. You see the pain and the suffering and all those things. Well, it says in the Word of God that these things must be before the coming of the Son of Man. I don't know why things are shaping up the way they are, but I know that it's leading up to Jesus coming back for His church. Amen. And I can't help but believe that it's going to be soon. You know, I've said that for years, but I mean, I look at the Middle East. I look at the, you know, these countries... Uh, I, I look at everything, uh, I just, I tell you, man, Jesus is getting ready to rapture his church out, amen? You know, and the devil's just turned up the coal, he's turned up the fire. He's just trying to make things unpleasant. But how many knows that we have power and authority in the name of Jesus? Say, so I bind you, devil, in Jesus' name. How many knows that the Bible says, uh, if our ways are pleasing to God... He'll even cause our enemies to be at peace with us. Is, is trials and suffering an enemy to you? Well, don't think that you have to suffer every day. Amen? 
The devil will come to you and try to make you think you have to be miserable for the rest of your life. You tell the devil to get out of your face. You tell the devil, say, no, I've got the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. It's a supernatural strength that comes down from above, from the Father of lights. Amen. You tell the devil to get ye behind you in Jesus' name. Amen. You tell the devil, no, I can have happiness and peace right now. This suffering can stop right now. I can live in peace and harmony with God right now in this world. Amen. We can have heaven on earth right now. We can have prosperity on earth right now. But if the case is you are suffering, just think that it's a temporary thing. You live in a temporary world. The suffering you're going through is going to be a temporary thing for God. God's going to move and, and move on your behalf with faith believing. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. Praise God. But in verse 6 it says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Well, Jesus Christ is getting ready to be revealed. Amen. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I don't know if you know it or not, but one day we're going to stand before God. And there's going to be the host of heaven around. And when God declares and says what we've done for him and his glory, people are going to give us standing ovations in heaven. Amen. If you haven't gotten a cheer here on earth for serving Christ, you're going to get one up there. Amen. Ooh, glory. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And Jesus is coming with rewards in his hands. And people in the next world are going to give you oohs and ahs over the rewards that you've gained while you were on earth. Ah, the list of trials and temptations in the world are in unlimited as acts of behavior. You know, I don't even know where to begin. For every act, there can be the sin of too much or the sin of too little. The sins of commission or the sins of omission. Uh, life is fraught with trials and temptations, and this is especially true with genuine believers. For, for believers stand in opposition to the selfish, immoral, greedy, and unjust ways of the world. This goes against the grain of the world because the world is in opposition to God. Uh, praise the Lord. When a, saved, when a believer is saved, why does God not just go ahead and give him a trouble-free, perfect life? Sometimes it would seem that God should do this. If God loves us and really cares for us, then he should not let terrible things happen to us. Why does God let them happen? Why do the trials and temptations of life fall upon us? You know, I've asked those questions, especially with such heaviness and sorrow. Scripture says there are two reasons why the believer is tried and tempted. The believer's faith must be tried. The word tried, uh, uh, I can't pronounce the Greek word here. I didn't use my pronouncer, but uh, it means to prove, to test, to strengthen, to show that your faith is genuine. It is just like gold. Gold has to be put to the fire in order to clean out all the impurities and dross and to make it pure and clean. Now note the, uh, what this verse says. We are more precious than gold. Gold perishes, but not believers. Believers are to live forever. Therefore, if gold has to be put in the fire to be made clean and pure, how much more do we? The point is striking. God uses a fire of trials and temptations for a good purpose. He uses them to make us clean and pure, to make us trust him more and more. Uh, the trials and temptations of life are not to defeat or discourage us. On the contrary, we are to conquer them. Uh, we are to use them as stepping stones to become stronger and stronger in life. But how? How can we conquer trials and temptations when they are so devastating, destructive, powerful, damaging, and threatening? Trials and temptations are to be conquered by our love for Jesus Christ. 
Trials and temptations are to be conquered by our belief in Jesus Christ. Trials and temptations are to be conquered by rejoicing and by the unspeakable joy that fills our hearts. God is saying, don't let those things bother you. I, when I'm at work, I like to think I'm in the exact I'm doing the exact thing that God wants me to be doing tonight. Even if it doesn't seem pleasant. I say, okay, bless God. This is what God wants me to be doing. You know, because I, I commit my ways to the Lord. Amen. And sometimes it's not always pleasant. And then there's nights I have, you know, that there's good nights. You know, I've had a pleasant night. You know, I work nights. And, and uh, sometimes in our Christian walk, there, there's going to be some unpleasant times. I mean... I don't know where to begin or where to start, but I mean, there's going to be times when you're going to be uncomfortable. But how many knows that Jesus is, is going to help you overcome those things, amen? And just re remember that, that it's the devil that wants you to, to believe that you have to suffer and, and be in agony day after day after day for the rest of your life. No. Like I said, you tell the devil to get out, amen? Uh, the point is this. Joying and rejoicing in the Lord and His presence will stir us to stand against temptations and trials. Joy and rejoicing will help us to focus upon Christ and His glorious power. You got to remember the sufferings of Christ, amen? If Christ suffered, then we're going to suffer, amen? But Christ also rejoiced, and so we're going to rejoice too, amen? So... Trials and temptations are to be conquered by keeping our eyes focused upon the salvation of our souls. You know, this is the end, the very goal toward which we are moving, the salvation of our souls. As in any work or task, we must keep our eyes upon the goal. So many people in the world take their eyes off the goal, amen. Uh, the stronger we become to stand against all obstacles, so it is with salvation. The more we focus upon the salvation of our souls, the stronger we become to reject and turn away from temptation to conquer the trials of life. Uh, you know, and for verses 10 through 12, it's talking about how the angels long to look into it. And, and uh, I mean, even the very angels wanted to look into this great salvation that God's provided. You know, I, I don't know where you are today, tonight. I don't know what you've had to suffer or, or what you're going through right now. But I know there's one who's great and mighty who bore your sorrows and your pains and your agonies and your, all those things. He's, he's touched with a feeling of infirmities like, like a touch by the, a feeling of your infirmities. He knows what you're going through. Amen. Amen. Uh, even though weeping may endure for the night, joy cometh in the morning. You know, I'm going to close right there, and uh, I hope that this word has blessed you. I hope that this word will bring you encouragement. Uh, I hope that this word will let you know that you don't have to live a life of suffering for the rest of your life, that that too is just temporary. What if, what if we said that right now this suffering is going to stop in Jesus' name, and you know exactly what to do when the devil tries to come against you again? You speak to those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, get thee behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. God, what a wonderful anointed word. Um, you know, as uh, Pastor was saying, um, he said, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And that's in Romans 8, 31. And then Romans 8, 32 says, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And so Jesus died on the cross. He died on the cross for our sins so we could have eternal life. And he died on the cross for us so that he could freely give us all things. And that, that pertains to everything in our life that we have need of. He's done it for us. And, and like Pastor said, if you're here tonight and you haven't received the Lord 
as your Savior. I want to pray this prayer for you. Anyone that wants to rededicate your life, use this prayer as your rededication. And everyone here is going to help pray with you after me. Father in heaven, heaven. thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. And thank you for raising him again from the dead. Jesus, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and be Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer and you believed it in your heart, you are now a child of God. Begin to live like him. Uh, how do you live like him? Well, learn about him. He's got this whole book, this holy Bible. It, it has your instructions for life. And you will find many blessings in there. You will find revelation and, and many things you didn't realize. And God will reveal his word to you.